there's kind of a couple of different ways of choosing how you route stuff to the filters in Vital. Um, you have a filter routing option here on each oscillator, um, which I think is kind of the most maybe easy to understand uh, like immediately in that you can choose filter one or filter two or filter one and two or effects, which just sends it straight to this tab or direct out, which skips the effects completely. Um, but you do also have the option of, of like doing that sort of uh, routing like down within the filters themselves as well. Cause you can see we have oscillator one, two, three sample and filter two as well. Um, so at the moment, this only has oscillator one going through it, but I think let's, let's just send them all through for now. And this is where we can kind of start to get like a little bit more movement, um, a bit, a bit more movement going. So there's a lot of different filter types in here, which is great. You've got sort of analog, dirty, ladder, you've got digital ones. Um, and the thing that I really like about the filters in here is that let's say okay this is just like a low cut um they're all kind of morphing filters um so in in serum uh, they have a few and i think in the auto filter in ableton you have this kind of like morphing filter um which kind of like behaves a bit you know kind of it kind of changes like it's a bit like that basically it kind of goes from being a low pass to a band pass to a high pass um all the filters in in vital kind of do that uh, which is great. So you're not just limited to like one filter sound, I suppose, or style. Um, they all have some kind of different way of manipulating them. So you have this this slider at the top that that kind of morphs it. Um, you've got your resonance or cue on the side. Um, you cut off at the bottom here, and then a drive. Um, and a mix and you know you've got key track as well if you want to use that um, now I kind of like to have these kind of moving a fair amount if I can so let's let's just start off maybe with just like a low low pass um, and I'm gonna maybe just stick an envelope on it to start off with so we can get a bit of a like attack um, now envelope one is our amplitude envelope for like the whole synth so um, we don't really want to map that to other stuff um, it's kind of best to just use that for its intended purpose so we're going to go for envelope two um, and just click and drag that onto our cutoff here um, and I'm just going to grab our like sustain here and just drop it down Cool. So because it's an envelope and because we're on legato, um, we are only going to re-trigger that envelope when I like kind of take my fingers off the keys, I suppose. Um, but if I change notes in between, it's not going to happen, which is is, is ideal. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, I think it would be good to maybe get a little bit of extra movement in there as well. Now, obviously, if we if we start morphing it, too much then it's gonna kind of kill all the low end which maybe isn't what we what we really want so so maybe what i'm going to do instead is i'm just going to grab one of these lfos and i'm also going to put that on the cutoff as well so we've got like a couple of different things uh modulating our our filter here so and i'm going to kind of just throw in some semi-random points um it's worth kind of noting actually that that vital does come with a few kind of nice presets for these if you just want to get something thrown in so you do have your like soar up and down and sign and square and all that kind of stuff but you also have some more interesting ones like this as well um and some kind of pretty crazy shapes that would be like very time consuming to make yourself um and some kind of good starting points for kind of randomized stuff as well um so you know you could do something like loading in let's say nervous groove here but then you can very easily just go in and start like changing some of this stuff um if you don't want to just be using their pan um so it's double click to delete points um as well as create them so there we go <laughs> Cool. Um, now it's definitely a bit too quick at the moment. Again, I'm just going to kind of put it into um, seconds and just slow it down a bit. And this is kind of where the seconds uh, turning, switching it into seconds is really going to 
come in handy because I'm actually going to use a random oscillator, one of these, to to sort of change the speed of this. Um, and if we had it, if we had it set to um, kind of beat divisions it would just be jumping between let's say like you know it would go like 16th notes and then when it's sped up it would just suddenly jump to 30 second notes or something like that um whereas with uh seconds mode it's just going to like smoothly change the speed without any kind of jumping around um which is going to sound a bit more kind of smooth and natural i suppose even though we're making a very unnatural sound here um Okay, so I'm going to just drag and drop. We could use one of these um, ones that we already have, to be honest. Um, but I think I'm going to use random three. And you can see this is something that it, it does very similar to Serum as well. Because I used up the two randoms that were already there, it's like given us another one at the bottom. And I think it gives you up to four. And I think with the LFOs it gives you up to eight. Um, and I'm not sure with the envelopes, but I'm guessing maybe six. Um, so let's just drag and drop this random and I'm just going to drag and drop it onto onto here where it says the frequency um, just slow it down now at the moment it's kind of going pretty crazy because it's like speeding it speeding uploads and it's only speeding it up because it's kind of like in unipolar mode so what that basically means is that from the point that I've set this, from my frequency of 4.346 seconds, um, it's only speeding it up. That's all that the range is doing. So as it goes from kind of a zero value here and upwards, we're only going to get faster results than 4.346 seconds. Now, if I go into our matrix over here, um, you can switch it into like a bipolar um, by just clicking this little button here. Um, glad you're enjoying it Sven, um, it's a great synth, definitely recommend it. Um, so yeah, so uh, bipolar um, mode you can kind of switch on and off here, I think by default they're all, um, they will just get dropped on as unipolar, but what this kind of means is that we're going to get some values that are faster, some values that are slower, um, and I kind of prefer that, I just feel that like, you know, a lot of the time we're going to want slower values maybe, I mean we can obviously slow this down a little bit, but... Um, it's nice to get that kind of variation, so. Yeah, so you can kind of see it like speeding up and slowing down a bit, which is great. And I'm just going to make this go a little bit quicker. Um, <laughs> not going to get much sleep tonight. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a bit of a time sink that's for sure <laughs> um okay so i'm just gonna like take off uh I, there's a couple of like sort of hard jumps here at the end um which i'm just gonna kind of smooth those out a little bit um they can still be fast but i just don't want them to be like a like a hard kind of almost like square wave jump <laughs> Yeah, great. I kind of like how that's kind of manipulating that filter in a bit of an unpredictable way. Now, we could also um, experiment maybe with this, uh, but I'm thinking maybe we do that with another filter, so...